Ramses III was one of Egypt's last great pharaohs. Had he lived in peaceful times, it's likely that his reign would be remembered as a prosperous and happy era. But alas, he was born into the tumultuous 12th century BCE, an era of chaos and decline not only for Egypt, but for the whole eastern Mediterranean. The Bronze Age collapse was in full swing. Empires, kingdoms, and entire civilizations were disappearing at an alarming rate. Wealth, food, and peace were scarce, and violence, desperation, and destruction were widespread. The 30-year reign of Ramses was characterized by a ceaseless effort to prevent the total collapse of his country. And in doing this, he gave the New Kingdom Egyptians one final gasp of greatness before fading into memory and myth. On the walls of his mortuary temple in Medinet Habu, Ramses portrays himself as the shield that guards the realms of men against the hordes of invading sea people. I've already done a video on them, but in short, they were a piratical band of invaders who appear to have sacked, burned, and slaughtered their way across the eastern Mediterranean until arriving in Egypt. Here, Ramses and his army turned them back in two massive battles. Although it's likely that these battles did in fact happen, the inscriptions and artworks at Medinet Habu are propaganda, trying desperately to portray an era of continuity and stability. The reality was anything but. The climate had changed, causing famine and food shortage. Merchants came home empty-handed, as the cities they had traded with outside of Egypt were destroyed or abandoned. Despite the splendor of his temple, Ramses's Egypt continued to spiral into crisis. Quick side note, I would totally recommend visiting Medinet Habu if you get the chance. It's just awesome. It's super well preserved, like, all of the colors and artworks look amazing, and it's off the beaten track a little, so it's unlikely that you'll have to fight your way through a crowd of sweaty tourists gawping at hieroglyphs. Instead, you can happily wander around as one of the only sweaty tourists to visit this absolute gem of a sight. Ramses styled himself a warrior king, fighting with his men in front of him and a moon behind him against Egypt's many foreign enemies at the time. Little did he realize that the greatest danger came from within his own household. In 2012, the mummy of Ramses III was scanned by Egyptologists, who published their findings and their conclusion that Ramses III was murdered. <laughs> by the way, I'm going to be showing lots of pictures of mummies in this video. So even though they're not that bad, if you really, really, really don't want to see the remains of someone who's been dead for over 3,000 years, click away now. The CT scan of his remains revealed that Ramses III had lost a toe, which can't have been particularly pleasant, but the more likely cause of death was the fact that his throat had been severely cut. This had never been noticed before, largely due to the skill of ancient Egyptian embalmers. Whoever mummified Ramses III appears to have been keen to hide the injury, so they resealed the wound in his throat and they stuffed it with resin to try and heal it up. Ouch. And he doesn't seem to have been the only victim. Next to the body of Ramses III was found the body of another man, a young man between 18 and 20 years old, who seems to have died from strangulation. His name is Unknown Man E, a strange foreign name that Egyptologists still debate the meaning of. I'm only joking, but for years no one knew who this guy was. But nowadays, thanks to DNA testing, we have a pretty good idea of his identity. Unknown man E shares about 50% of his DNA with Ramses, suggesting that it was his son. But which son? And why is he buried next to him? And why was he strangled? Well, we'll get into that. So what happened to Ramses III? Well, the answer may lie in this papyrus scroll, currently residing in the Egyptian Museum in Turin, Italy. It is called the Judiciary Papyrus of Turin. This papyrus details the trial and the conviction of a number of people who were conspiring to kill Ramses III. It was previously believed that this was only an attempted murder and that Ramses himself oversaw the proceedings. But now that we know that Ramses died violently and that the man buried next to him is his son, a new image of events is painted for us. So let's have a look at what historians think happened to Ramses III. In the year 1155, Ramses, who has been pharaoh for a little over 30 years at this point, and is probably in his early 60s, heads down to the city of Thebes for a festival. This is an important part of being pharaoh, you've got to be at the front of all religious festivals, got to keep those gods happy. And anyone who's anyone is at this festival, you know, all of the important people, the court officials, the priests, Ramses's entire family 
which is pretty huge because Ramses, like most pharaohs, has multiple wives and children by all of them. But each pharaoh also has kind of like a main wife, the children of whom will succeed Ramses. And Ramses already has an heir, a chosen successor, someone designated to be pharaoh after he dies. By his main wife, this kid is also called Ramses. But all of the other wives and children are also present at the festival, including Tayi, a minor wife who is nevertheless very ambitious. She has plans to supplant Ramses's current heir and replace him with her own son, an 18-year-old called Pentawa. But it seems that Ramses wasn't particularly open to the suggestion that he should replace his current heir with another son of his. So, with the festival in full swing, Tai starts gathering around her people who think that her son should in fact replace Ramses after he's gone, and that he should in fact replace him sooner rather than later. At least 38 people become linked to this growing conspiracy, and soon roles are assigned and plans are made. Some people are given the grisly task of dispatching Ramses, whilst others are told to go out into the street and rally the people behind Pentawa. This is what we can tell from the Judiciary Papyrus. How the actual plot went down is still a mystery to us. They clearly got Ramses, I mean, they got him good, they cut most of his throat out, but they definitely didn't get his son. Ramses IV succeeds his father as Pharaoh upon his death, and he arrests the conspirators. Of the 38 conspirators found guilty, 28 are executed, which is hardly a surprise, but 10 of them commit suicide probably an option given to them by the court so they could avoid the shame of execution. And amongst this ten is Pentawa, the other son of Ramses by Tai, this minor wife, who was supposed to replace his brother had the conspiracy gone according to plan. And that brings us back to unknown man E, the son of Ramses who died by strangulation. It's interesting to note that even though he lies beside his father in death, he isn't treated with the same honours as Ramses III was. Ramses had been properly mummified and buried. You know, the usual stuff. Organs taken out, stuffed full of salt, given a lovely kingly tomb in the Valley of the Kings. The royal treatment. But unknown man E's mummification was clearly a rushed affair. He still has all of his organs. His coffin is crudely carved out of cedar wood, and he is wrapped in a ritually impure goat skin. This is a shoddy and borderline disrespectful way to bury the son of a pharaoh. So, who is Unknown Man E? Well, it's probably Pentua. The death by strangulation may be a sign of a suicide by hanging, and the poor quality of his mummification may have been a sign of disrespect against this would-be usurper. Or maybe he was never meant to be buried with his dad at all, and a family member quickly but incompetently embalmed his body and shoved him in the tomb so that he may rest alongside his father. Who knows? The fate of Tai, Ramses' murderous wife and the mother of Pentua, is unknown, but it's pretty likely that she was executed or forced to take her own life alongside her son. The murder of Ramses III marks the beginning of a serious decline for the prosperity of Egypt. His son, Ramses IV, will do his honest best to continue the legacy and projects of his father, but he dies six years into his reign, and after that, the dynasty seriously declines. The following century will see the power of Egypt and the pharaohs continue to fall further and further and further away from the glory days of the 13th century. And the story of the harem conspiracy and the murder of Ramses III is a great little episode in this period of Egyptian history. Do we have the full story? Of course we don't. For all we know, Tai and Pentawa were completely innocent in Ramses III's murder, and all of this was fabricated by Ramses IV to, I don't know, purge his brother and therefore a potential rival from court. Who's to say? But it's speculating on things like this that make history so much fun. Trying to piece together events from millennia ago and figure out what happened using only the tiny amounts of evidence that survived to us is, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest puzzle in the world. And it's part of what makes the Hiram Conspiracy especially such an interesting subchapter of human history. Love it. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Have a really nice week.